Yo, my name's Fletcher. <laughs> um, we talked about the fact that I have my black belt in karate, um, having your heart broken, um, anxiety, therapists. We like went in today, really in. So you should watch it. It's real good. Let's do this. Hello, beautiful humans. We got uh, Dan here. Yep. We got me here. And we welcome Fletcher to the studio. All right. <laughs> right on time. Right Not on so time. so much. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty fitting. It's Los Angeles traffic, okay, Dan? <laughs> you know how it goes. Yes. I always like, te- like text people. I'm like, oh my God, like my Uber driver died. Like, I'm sorry I'm late. That's like, excuse. <laughs> you are it's no more New Jersey, you know what I mean? When you can tell somebody, oh, I'm at exit whatever. Exactly. I'll see you soon. Yeah. Where in New Jersey are you from? The shore, like Asbury Park, Point Pleasant, oh. Belmar. Where uh, are you from? I'm from Wayne, New Jersey. Okay, nice. So closer to Manhattan, but oh, I spent yeah. almost every summer in either Point Pleasant or La Valette. So you were, uh, um, I was a Benny. Okay. But you were a- What does Benny what? stand for? Benny stands for- Stands for something. It's like an acronym for for five cities. Did I, you know that? I Benny? didn't know it was an acronym, but I knew it stood for or defined pretty much the group of community, uh, the, the community that comes to the beach just for the summer and then leaves. Yeah. And then totally just infiltrates totally. your normal life. Totally. Who's living in an abandoned Point Pleasant. It's like a ghost town, not during the summer. 365. Yeah, it's crazy. What, what does that do for your brain? Like to see the beach in the in the snow? It's weird. It's super weird. I mean, but like that's the best time to go to the beach is in like September when people aren't there. You know. Yeah. And then yeah. like the summer rolls around, do you retreat because you don't want to be around everybody? Yeah. Like we, like me and my friends, like we don't go to the beach in the summer, which is cu- crazy yeah. because there's just so many people there. It's the opposite. Yeah, exactly. <sighs> Fletcher, good to see you. Good to see you. From the beach of New Jersey to NYU, mm-hmm. right? X Factor's in your journey there a little bit. It is indeed. And now here in LA, Undrunk You is a single. Where do we start? Because uh, you fascinate me, my friend. Your music's really good. Thank you. Undrunk you, that. Undrunk You is a deep record. I think you're adding a word to it. <laughs> it's Undrunk. Oh, gosh. Sorry. It's okay. It's, it's, it's all right. There's some like, there's some Unlove You. There's But there is a lyric in it, right? Yeah. I wish I could get a little Undrunk so I could uncall you at five in the morning. Yeah. I would un bleep you but some things you can't undo where does this start i mean the journey starts um with me in new jersey i was a um disney princess hannah montana taylor swift impersonator (laughs) for little kids birthday parties What? (laughs) what do you learn about performing through that Well, my boss used to literally make me go to like IHOP and sing for people eating their pancakes on International (laughs) Pancake Day. (laughs) Like, and I would be in like Snow White and like, like flopping around with like an Ariel tail. And I'm like, I would like beg. I'm like, please, please don't make me do this right now. Like people are just eating their pancakes. Like they don't want to be sung to. (laughs) But, But if you can capture their attention... Yeah, but everyone is just like, it's uncomfortable. Like, imagine sitting down eating, like, your pancakes and somebody just comes up and it's like, look at this stuff. <laughs> You're like, no thanks. It's like a charity case. They like, give me a dollar <laughs> to leave. But, but you you have to build a tough skin, right? To, to be able to sing and be, be talented. Definitely build, yeah, definitely build some thick skin. Right. Yeah. That situation's a tough one. It's a weird one, for sure. Okay, so you're a princess in New Jersey, <laughs> yeah. Hannah Montana impersonator. A princess, Taylor Swift impersonator. Also, I like I could pull off the Taylor Swift thing like with the right wig, but the Hannah Montana was not did it. Like I used to wear these like huge sunglasses because I just look nothing like her, and little kids would be like, "That's not her," <laughs> and I would wear these huge sunglasses, and when I would perform, they would just like fog up, and I couldn't. F- see anything <laughs> well, like, this is a mess what point in your journey are you doing this like like H- high school okay high school yeah and I had just like grown up doing like the plays and, and and acting and stuff and I started with classical vocal training when I was five wow yeah so my like background is actually in like opera so but at, but at 14 you write your first song ever yeah I wrote I wrote my first song ever when I was 14 with my best friend Nicole who's like still like a really great friend of mine now. What is that record? 
It's nothing. It literally is just exists like in a note, like in a notebook that has like coffee stains and has been through some life. What is it about? It's it's literally like a song about like having. I hadn't even like, I hadn't even had my heart broken yet, and it's a song about heart, like having your heart broken. I was foreshadowing <laughs> this EP, my music now. It's like, don't want to hear your voice no more, ain't nothing but a heartbreak. Don't want to hear you say another word, I just can't take it. Don't want to see your face again, it brings back memories of all the times we had you and me. What? I like what? still remember it. That's not too bad. That was great. It's not good. I don't know. Maybe it's just your incredible should voice. Should I reintroduce it? I think you should feature it. It. Like you should like just throw it in yeah, there. Yeah, should somewhere. have like somebody jump on it. I, oh, you got friends. You, yeah, <laughs> not not yet. <laughs> You're on your way. Anyway, A- after this way. comes out, people are going to be wanting to d- work with you. Prepare yourself. And you're going to be yeah. like, I have a great record for you. I wrote it when I was 14. Yeah, exactly. I'm be like, hey, I got some fire. It's been <laughs> sitting in my bank for years, ready to go. Do you keep writing after that? Who do you share that song with at 14? Um, we sang it at our talent show. Wow. Yeah, we sang it at a talent show. All those lucky and people. And then it like never saw the light of day after that. <laughs> but do you get inspired to keep learning music after that? Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, I think it's funny. Like I grew up, I always thought that I didn't have what it takes to be a, write, a writer. Like I always thought, um, I don't know. I spent a lot of my my, my childhood thinking that like I wasn't talented enough to do this because I would like compare myself to all of the other like artists that were out there, and I don't know. I always thought that I like wasn't doing enough, and so even when I, I went to the Clive Davis Institute of Recorded Music at NYU, and even when I was there, I was just like comparing myself to what everybody else had going on, and I don't know. I think we just have like a natural tendency as humans to just think that like we're not enough. You know, and like I feel oh, like yeah. even just every year I like make a New Year's resolution. I'm like, I'm gonna read more. I'm gonna do more of this and do more of that and be more of this. And then you get frustrated with yourself when you're not there. And so I don't know. I'm trying to spend like 2019 and walk into this year like just telling myself that I am enough the way that I am. That's beautiful, and that takes a lot of life to be lived, and kind of a lot of ups and downs to understand that and realize that mm-hmm. and really commit to it. Totally. And what you're saying about you know comparing yourself to others, you're wasting all that energy that you could be focusing on you. Yeah. Right? For sure. But, it's, but it must have been hard. So how did you... What, what happened in your life that like built these blinders to just focus on you and to sit down and write for you and create for you? I don't know. I mean, I think I'm still still building them, honestly. I feel like, you know, my entire life has just been like such a learning experience that I still feel like I'm learning about myself every day and figuring it out. And um, this this EP and this music that I have coming out has honestly been like the the best lesson I could have ever had. And I feel like I've been able to like dive into myself and, and I I wrote this whole body of work about a breakup that I went through and about, um, someone that I was in a relationship with during my time at college. And the whole thing is just like been my form of closure from that situation that I never got from that person. And, um, it's been like it's been such a, a a learning experience. It like really teaches you a lot about yourself, and I don't know. I I am still learning every day. Is that from all of the just deep thought and the way you have to analyze your own emotions to write a record and an album? Yeah, I think I I definitely think so. I think I've always really struggled with the idea of vulnerability because I never want people to think that I'm weak or need help or even I grew up as like a really anxious kid and I still struggle with anxiety and I I had really bad OCD growing up and I had such a problem with like going to see a therapist because I'm like if I go see a therapist that means I'm admitting that like I'm not okay and like I've learned that the the best things have happened in my life just from being honest and being vulnerable about my experiences and what I've been through because then somebody else is able to see you on like a human level and is like, oh, me too, you know? And that's just been my biggest thing for me 
with this music is just like wanting to make people feel something. Is that different than your mission with finding Fletcher? No, it's not different. I think I think it's one and the same because I think I I want people to feel something and I literally think like I used to be ups- get really upset that I thought that I was like too sensitive of a person for like this industry or for like this world and because like I, I walk into a room and I feel people's energies like really strongly. Like I've never been able to like watch the news or anything as a little kid because I would see the stories happening and I would think about their stories and their experiences for like weeks and months and I would feel their like physical pain or if I go into like a doctor's office I like feel it's really weird I'm like really like I'm I'm tough but I'm I'm a really sensitive person but and I used to think that I'm like oh I can't I don't I, I don't think I'm strong enough to like handle this I don't I don't think that I can do this and I'm and I'm realizing that like that's like the best part of life is like feeling the highest highs and the lowest lows and like feeling like I feel like I connect to people really really easily and and I used to think it was like such a weakness but like I don't know I'm trying to make it my superpower it's a strength because then you understand it's a it's a real level of empathy totally that is special but healing for you but also could be healing for other people I I think it's a gift, really. It's pretty yeah. cool. Thank you. You know, it's nice. And it's the right way to do art. So when you write, this la- the EP that's coming, right? Mm-hmm. Starts with Undrunk, mm-hmm. yeah? Mm-hmm. That's about you. Do you have the ability to write songs about other people? I mean, undr- Undrunk and this whole body of work is about one person in, in particular. And it, it's, ab- it's about my last relationship and just like having my heart completely ripped to shreds and I think we can all probably like pinpoint that person in our life that kind of just really just like stepped on your heart and oh, and yeah. like peed on it <laughs> lit it on fire <laughs> ate it threw it back up and then stuck it back inside of you and then yeah and then they're like but I love you yeah. <laughs> um sick yeah, so I think like we all we all have that person, and like I do have the ability to to write about other people, but like all of the songs are about the way that that person made me feel. I get that. Yeah, a record like I believe you hmm. is that about you? Is that talking to yourself? Are you talking to those who have gone through something? Yeah, um, I believe you. I wrote in response to the Me, me Too movement and. I'm fortunate enough to work with like a ton of incredible female um, creatives, producers, and you know some women who have written some of the biggest pop songs. And hearing their experiences and their stories about abuse and assault and what they've had to go through to get where they are in the music industry is something that I felt like it was my duty to share those collective experiences and stories and their like from my own and just hearing their what they have gone through um just to be able to give them a, a voice and a platform was something that like I felt really really moved to do and that's a hard record to create for somebody who might not be as sensitive as you but for somebody who is you you know you're sensitive that, those are hard stories to take in yeah no, it, it it definitely is. I I think I I I really like felt it so much of it on on a deep level and just based off of like my own personal experiences and similar situations. Um, that was a really important song for me to make. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's yeah, it's re- insanely powerful. Appreciate that. This new e- EP. We're doing EPs so far. We don't yeah. have albums yet. No, we don't. Are we? Is that a uh, strategic a little bit? I mean, I've just been, I've been working on this music for like the last two years and it's been super close to my heart and I'm just like so excited to finally, finally get it out there. And, um, yeah, the first, the first song is Undrunk and, um, the EP will be coming really soon and I just am, am like so stoked for it to be out in the world. Undrunk is (laughs) a great record, like I said, 
very honest. Yeah. Scary to be that honest in the song? Yeah, I literally, like, I remember the first time I played it for my parent, like, because my parents were like, kept being like, my name's Carrie, and they're like, Carrie, like, why aren't you playing us your new music? And, and like, we want to hear Undrunk. And I'm just like sweating, thinking about my dad, like hearing these things lyrics and so every time I find myself playing them the music I'll like tur- like turn it down or I'll, like cough and sneeze over it and I'll just be like hey I'll be like hey mom what do we do what do we do for dinner tonight she'll be like I'm trying to listen to your music right now um so it was a weird weird vibe playing that for your for your parents yeah. and just like all of my songs in general are like very much like that they're just like super honest so what is their reaction when they finally hear it without you coughing over it I, I honestly think my dad has no idea what I'm saying. <laughs> like, I don't think he knows what's going on, like, 99% of the time. It just, in those moments, it just comes in as... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he's just like, and he's like kind of singing. Like, I'm like, all right, I'm not going to let you know what I'm actually saying there. Your parents not in the entertainment industry, but your grandma did perform. I, yeah, she did. You do your research. Uh, a little bit. A little bit. You know, Uh, my grandma like did she did like plays and stuff growing up, but my parents are not musical people whatsoever. Like actually, even growing up, we had two CDs in the house. It was Bob Marley and Celine Dion. (laughs) Two great ones. Two iconic, (laughs) obviously. If you're gonna have two CDs, those are gonna be the ones. But those are like my only. Those were my and I knew like every like learned every lyric, every word, like riff for riff, Celine Dion. And then they're like, we need to put this kid in singing lessons or something. Like, cause I was, I was literally, I was singing before I was speaking. And in Point Pleasant, you yeah. know, it's kind of hard to find a, a quality uh, vocal coach. <laughs> <laughs> but, You're right. But you found one. Few and far between <laughs> in, in, at the Jersey Shore. <laughs> what would your parents do that you live down there full time? Uh, my dad works in the car business and, cool. and yeah, works with cars and dealerships. And then my mom was a flight attendant for Delta Airlines for 30 years. Out of Philly? Out of, no, not out of Philly. She was, uh, she was like out of Boston for a bit, out of Georgia, but like we've always been in, in Jersey. Got it. Um, cool. Yeah. So my mom is a, is a traveling lady. She's a badass. Cultured. She yeah. gets around. She totally does. Jet set. <laughs> Uh, you said this whole EP is a, is about one person and one breakup. Mm-hmm. Does that person know you wrote a whole EP about them? Um, <laughs> they do now. Okay. They they, they do of, now. As of this we moment, we don't speak. We don't speak. Um, but they they know that the the because we ran into each other and I was just like, hey. I said some things, and it's in some music, and it's coming out, and that was the first time we saw each other in like three years. So this relationship was three years ago? Yeah. So it had that much of an impact that you're still writing about it today? Yeah, it was like my first love. It ruined my life. Where'd you run into them? At a bar. What coast? Here, like two weeks ago. Oh my gosh. So they just found out. Yeah. Dude, the universe wanted that running to happen. I know. It was crazy. And what? I was like having, I was like, this is the, really this freaking me out. What was their reaction? Um, They're just like, I, like I, I, I understand. Like, you're an artist. You have to do what you have to do. And I'm like, yeah, but you don't even know what I'm about <laughs> to say right now. <laughs> I'm like, saddle up. <laughs> Strap on it. <in. laughs> Uh, yeah. So, are you worried it's gonna like give them satisfaction that you wrote this whole thing about them? I think if you date an artist, you just like it just comes with the territory. Like you know that they're gonna write about you, and also, no matter what happens. Like if even if you stay with them, if you break up with them, just know like whatever you're doing, documented. it's about to be documented <laughs> for life. <laughs> but ultimately. It, it, it's, for it's a you. warning. It's like, don't screw me over. I'm going to write about it. Well, and put it. you on blast. And you need to, to heal some world. way. Yeah. No, it's true. And it, like that was my only way to heal from it was to like, write about it. Because we li- like when we ended, there was no closure. It was literally just like, like ghosted. What? They ghosted you? Yeah. Whoa. How could anyone do that to you? I don't know, guys. Being ghosted sucks. Love sucks. <laughs> I was saying this morning that like it's literally the worst like having your heart broken is like the closest feeling to death I think we'll ever experience as human beings. I think you might be accurate. Because there's no it's almost worse than than being sick because like there's no 
you can at least take a, a medication. Like you can't take a medicine for a broken heart. No, it's time and it's mental healing, right? And, it's like and the time feels so long. Uh, I'm like, come on, get over it already. <laughs> Myself. <laughs> I had my heart broken twice. You have? Yeah. It took me about, one took me about a year to like really move on from, and yeah. the other one took two years. Wow. But one was with somebody I considered my best friend, and then I found her having sex with somebody in my sister's bedroom, and it was really scarring. And after that moment- it, That's traumatic. Yeah, it took me a year to get Where is she that. now? What's her address? <laughs> should, we go, should we go egg her house? Yeah, please. <laughs> Flaming bag of dog poop. Yeah, let's go. Let's go do it together. That was rough, yeah. Now I'm thinking about heartbreak and it really did hurt. Well, how do, how do you bounce back from that? You write about it. Yeah, you, you write about it and it just gives you, I don't know, a little bit more peace of mind. But, but but it did take you three years to do this. So like after they ghost you, do you go right to writing? At what point do you realize that you're in a place? I think you have to let yourself feel everything for a little bit first, like before you can sort of like collect how you feel. I think you need to go just like take a minute and then just like be with yourself. And then, I don't know, you just have to do like, you got to surround yourself with people that make you feel good and lift you up when you're, when you're feeling that way. So you want to exist and then you go and you kind of re-examine all yeah. of the feelings you felt while existing? Yeah. And then right? I, I, I guess so. I guess and it's just, I don't know. I think it's probably different for everybody. But for me, I needed to just like be with it for a second. And then I was like, cool, revenge. I'm going to write about all of this. <laughs> you mentioned therapy. Do you go to a therapist? I do. I have a great therapist. I think everybody needs to see a therapist. Life is crazy. Yeah, you're right. It's, and it's really hard to just like exist sometimes. And I think even just like the industry that we live in and the the political climate and like everything that's happening in the world, like I think we need we need outlets. And like I think therapy is really important. And then, you know, just I think music is just like such a universal outlet. And I I want to. I want to be the artist that like I really needed when I was a little girl. And y you do a lot of things that really showcase that. And I think Wasted Youth is one of them. Um, I want to get into that in a second. Do you feel like going to therapy makes you a better artist? Yeah, it definitely does because I am able to like, when you talk out loud to somebody about your emotions and your feelings, it like it you helps aware. you come aware and it helps you realize like stuff that maybe you weren't necessarily thinking about before. I understand that. Yeah. Wasted use. Powerful record. Thank you. For what it represents and the music video is just great. Thanks. But it is you have a you have a hope for the next generation of our world, which I support, believe and respect. And it has to do with sexuality. And yeah. even the fact that we live in a, a world where people are forced to come out in some way. Totally. You want to abolish that. Yeah, because it's just like you don't, people don't have to like go to their parents and be like, mom, I have to tell you something. I'm straight. <laughs> You're right. Like, that's so stupid. The fact that people even have to do that. I think, I think it is such um, an exciting time right now to be able to love who you love and not feel boxed into any sort of binary label. And I try to be, even in my music, like I try to be really careful about the use of pronouns. Like I, I, I try to just reference you a lot um, because I would never want somebody to be taken out of my song because they don't identify or connect with a, a pronoun or what I'm saying because like I've been in that position before. Um, so like whoever broke your heart, whether it was a guy, a girl, a trans guy, a trans girl, a non-binary person, like whoever broke your heart, it's still the shittiest feeling in the entire world. And it doesn't matter who did it. It's still broken. A hundred percent. And even beyond a broken heart, there's so many things that every relationship has in common, no totally. matter who whoever it's with. Yeah. And so I just, you know, I just want to be a real representation of what it means to be a woman in 2019 and like tell you know, female stories from the female perspective in a really honest, raw, authentic way. Um, and yeah, that's, Respect. that's what I'm here to do. You're on a great mission. I support Thank you in you. that mission. I do believe that uh, sexuality will become, uh, there's, 
I support you and what you're doing. Thank you. Because there's no, you, you draw more attention to something when you go, I gotta tell you something. Totally. I'm I mean, gay. if you just like walk out and you're just like, I am who I am. I love who I love. Like, doesn't and it's fl- gender and sexuality. It's fluid. It doesn't, it, it's not, it's not black and white people. <laughs> Get with the program. <laughs> Get it. Dude, I would, uh, you, you go. Well, I, I was, I just want to know what this, this person did to you. Like if you said that you, you said like in the upcoming songs. I mean, they ghosted her. Well, I know, but there must be a lot more than that. You're just going to have to listen to the EP to find out. How long did the relationship last for? Um, Like two and a half years. Wow. Yeah. That's a hearty one. Hearty enough to really just like mess you up. What, what phase in your life were you in when this started? Were you... I had just gotten to college. I like moved from New Jersey to, to New York. I went to NYU. Wow. Yeah, we met in Washington Square Park. <laughs> it's like a rom-com. It's the start to a terrible love saga. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I learned, I don't regret anything. I really learned a lot. I learned so much about myself. At what point in the relationship did it turn bad? I feel like people have a, a tendency to, to hang on to things for too long. Like, I feel like you get to a point where you just... And people spend a really long time like chasing highs and chasing that first feeling. And when you find yourself saying to yourself all the time, like, but we can get back to that. We can get back to that. I know we can. And when you start excusing really inexcusable behavior and coming up with excuses for that person, I just said excuses like 19 times. (laughs) Um, I think that's when you need to like check yourself and be like, oh. Why am I putting myself through this? Do you have to check yourself or does people around you go, what are you doing? You're blinded by love. Uh, When you're in that sort of scenario and that type of relationship, you're so blinded. And like everyone in your life can tell you like, this is not healthy. This is toxic. Like whatever, whatever. Like nobody's, you're not going to listen until you figure it out yourself until you literally hit rock bottom and you're like, I can't do one more second of this. When the song "Undrunk," what it, what what phase of this relationship is that record about? Is it was there a point a point where you were just drunk calling this person, hoping for a call back? Undrunk is is yeah. It's like it's that period once the relationship has ended and you're just and you know it's over, but like you kind of have this weird thing that like you wish that you could go back and like fix it and cause it's still kind of fresh and you still like are still thinking about this person all the time and sending those like drunk late night text messages that you wake up the next morning and you're just like, like SOS, what? <laughs> Somebody take the tequila bottle away from me next time, please. Um, yeah, it's about that. Oh, I know that feeling. It's rough. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I've been in a position where I, I'm pretty sure I ghosted somebody who was doing that to me, but only really? after they broke up with me. Wait, you ghosted somebody after they broke up with you? Yes. That's okay. But they, they kept broke up with to you. Hit me up. And well, I, you're like you're damaging me right now. Th- that's why I need to go. You're away. messing with my brain. Mm-hmm. No, you need to like self-preserve a little bit and be like, peace. A lot of people thought I was doing the wrong thing. I appreciate your validation. No, it's it's real. You got to protect yourself first and foremost. At what phase in your life do you go to X Factor? Um, Is this college, I, high school? I was 17. I was in high school. Like ending high school or yeah, junior was year? Yeah, it was my junior year of high school. Did you have a goal going in there? Um, I mean, I just came home from school one day and my mom was like, Carrie, I really want to meet Simon Cowell. <laughs> 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 Sorry, I keep like burping on the I hope you like, can't hear me burping on the mic right now. I hope you can. I was like shoving down food on my way here. Um, <laughs> my mom really wanted to meet Simon Cowell. And so I was like, cool. Like let's I used to I used to my whole life I literally would like I would watch American Idol and then I would go into the bathroom and I would have a full blown audition in the mirror. And I would mimic I would literally pretend I was the judges giving myself crazy no, feedback i called that prepared <laughs> yeah okay. prepared you were ready i like for, the way you're thinking about it you were ready it for anything feel better. they might throw at you yeah any, anything and i would like i would like practice my laugh if like somebody told me a joke <laughs> oh, well, can you, can you that? <laughs> sure no i actually don't want to do it <laughs> <Come on. laughs> it's too dark of a time to think about 
Um, okay, so you're obviously very well prepared for this audition. You've been preparing almost your whole life. Yeah, like since I came out Noreen Fletcher's womb. <laughs> you're ready I've to been go. preparing. <laughs> So you get there, and are you are you surprised at first that they're well, like I auditioned for American Idol when I was fifteen, and I oh. and it was I was it was terrible. I like made it to like the celebrity judge round. I went like my voice cracked. They were like, "No, go home." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "No, my life is over." <laughs> and then decided to put myself through round two um, because and, of Simon. Yeah, my, my yeah, and I was like, "All right, mom, let's go." And then she met Simon Gal. And um honestly, X Factor was like a really interesting experience because um once I was on the show, I was told by like a lot of the producers and stuff that I wasn't confident enough to be a solo artist. And then so I was put into a group who I really love the girls and like we are still friends to this day. But that I wasn't confident enough to be um to be a solo artist and that I was like not even confident enough to like sing leads lead vocals on the song so I was always the low harmony and I got so fire at singing low harmonies like I could whip out any song like it has come in handy um, that pisses me off by the way very angry but- and it messed with me for a long time I left and I was like oh I'm, I, they're like these professionals you know yeah. are like telling me that I'm not confident enough, like I don't have what it takes. And I'm like, they're, they're right. And I believed that for a really long time. So because that was like your first real interaction or second technically after American Idol with like professionals in the entertainment world, how do you get to Nashville after NYU? I actually went to Nashville while I was at NYU. I took a year leave of absence in the, in the middle of school and I went down to Nashville and I just, I, I just, that's when I really felt like I started writing like for me and I was like wait I actually really love this and like I feel like I can make a career out of this and um there's just something really special about writing in Nashville I don't know if it's like the country vibes or like what it is but people write differently there like it's all about the story and the narrative and like that's what I've really tried to take from Nashville to wherever I write is like creating a story and a moment and like a narrative for people to feel a part of that's what I want when I listen to a song everybody does you want to just like you want to see a story unfold in the three minutes and 30 seconds or whatever I feel like songs are getting shorter these days everything's like under two minutes right now dude was just listening to a record this morning that's like 237 is it a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, I think um, I think it's just a reflection of the times. People have absolutely no attention spans mm-hmm. and have the most insatiable appetite for music right now. So I think... But the quick rotation, right? It's like the shelf life on a record is so short. I know. I feel like you put it... Like I put out a song and everyone's like, sick, when's the next one? Like, where's the album? <laughs> I'm like, please... I swear it's coming, but give it a sec. Are we beyond timeless records? Like, have we as a society just kind of turned our back to that whole thing where we can listen to a song for six months? Yeah, but but I but like it's because we live it's because of the social media generation that we live in. And I don't think it's I think I don't think it's dead. I don't think that it's over. I just think that um I don't know. It's it's just a reflection of, of the time and the way that we consume. We want things and we want yeah, it we now. want it and we want instant gratification and likes and people to tell us that we're pretty and perfect and like it's 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 a weird we live in a weird world. Yeah, we do. Yeah, Scary. we freaking do. Mm-hmm. How'd you find your confidence after the X Factor to start creating again? What was it? I don't know. I don't really think that it was anything in in particular. I think it was just like moving to college and like living on my own for the first time. And my mom told me that I couldn't go to school in New York unless I got my black belt in karate. So I have my black belt in karate. <laughs> Dude, that's such Fun a New fact. Jersey mom thing to do. And it's oh, I awesome. know. And like in her Jersey, she's like, Carrie, you can't go to New York City. <laughs> Unless you get your black belt in karate. <laughs> um, so I'm like weird flex, but sure. I get my black belt. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So you can kick anybody's 
in this room. Yeah. But, but that's also like real life, right? You go to college as just a human being and you find yourself. Yeah. I had, I, I hit rock bottom in college for sure though. Like my, my, my freshman year, I, I just like hated it. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm like not cut out for this, you know, just like comparing myself to everybody and you just, you tough it out. I'm like, I have to, I'm like, I have to stay here. I wouldn't, I wasn't like given this gift and this voice and this like ability to share if I'm not going to be able to use it. Do so, you, do you remind yourself of that when things get tough? Yeah, I do. And I'm like having I've been t- it's been a really like crazy whirlwind of a week and like hearing my song on like the radio for the first time has been like the most wild experience ever. And I'm and I'm I, I do have to remind myself because I like I said before, I used to get frustrated. I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm I'm cut out for this or like strong enough to handle it. But I don't know. I think that's I think that's why I'll be able to do it. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. You're on a journey, my friend. Yeah. It's pretty cool to watch. It's pretty Thank cool you. to just see it all unfold. And I remember my friend, big fan of yours, Lauren Campbell. Mm-hmm. Big fan to Finding Fletcher and War Paint. Oh, amazing. Great records. At what point in college, though? Just back to that real quick. Yeah. Do you get the confidence to go to Nashville? What happens in your life that's like, okay, you know, I'm, I can go to Nashville and I can, I can share this. I can create here. I'm comfortable um, enough. I was working. I was working with a, a manager at the time who knew of a producer. Um, his the producer's name is Jamie Kenny, and who we went and like made our that whole like war paint and all that music together. And he was so so incredible, and we just had like such a vibe and like a chemistry in the studio. And um, I don't. I just I just felt like I needed to go elsewhere to like create this music and just like spend some time like dive into to that and that's like when I make music the best is when I'm able to just like step away for a second do you isolate yourself um I I prefer to I don't need to isolate myself but I think I'm just more creative when I like feel like I'm in a a different world a bit are you doing all the records on this new EP with the same group of people or is it a variety um it's a it's really it's a small group I wrote most of the songs with this writer Amy Allen who's like super super talented um, such an incredible writer I work with a lot of f- females I, I work with this girl Jen DeSilvio this other writer Ingrid Andres um, yes. and then Malay is uh, producing the Holy P I did a song with like my friends John Ryan and Julian Bonetta and that that's it those are the only collaborators on the on all this the the six songs a small group so you can share and feel comfortable and yeah no I, I definitely I, I feel the most comfortable when I'm to, the most comfortable to be creative and express myself when I'm with people that make me feel like I'm, I can be myself it's the only way it works yeah I think so what are you thinking Dan nothing I'm just listening <laughs> just nothing. tuned in no. <laughs> got nothing to say Carrie Fletcher Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Do we have a date on the EP? Um, we don't have a date on the EP, but it's it's coming sometime in the spring. It's a coming. Mm-hmm. It's a coming. Undrunk. That is the record. It deserves your ear. Are we still doing things late night to your ex's photo? Oh my god, no. <laughs> we've moved on. No, we've 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 moved on. We've moved on from that. Oh. Left that in. Okay. Twenty eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> Left that in. St- like 24 days ago. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, right, right at December 31st at 11:59. Like, cut off. <laughs> no, you that's an insane. That's an insane line. It's it's just dramatic. But, but everybody it, loves a little drama. Is it accurate? Like it's like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Love. Anyway. Carrie Fletcher. Thanks for having me. She has a black Carrie Fletcher. <laughs> she can kick your ass. I really hope you enjoyed that conversation. If you did, please subscribe and also check out our podcast. There's a link in the description and also comment and like and do things. Other interviews are on the screen somewhere. So click them. Thanks for watching.